Hey, hey, YouTube, how's everybody doing? My name is JC and welcome to the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays and DIY stuff on Fridays. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, if you haven't done any good deeds today, please do me a favor, click that little subscription button and you will automatically qualify. Without further ado, today we're gonna do a Cuban bread. This is a request from you guys, the subscribers. And um, actually, the, 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 the request was for Cuban sandwich, but you can't have a legit Cuban sandwich without Cuban bread. And unfortunately, if you live outside of Miami, that's just not regularly available. Uh, as far as recipe is concerned, the Cuban sandwich is basically standard bread uh, ingredients. However, there is a uh, technical aspect to it that if you don't follow it, uh, you're going to end up with, uh, let's just say, some other type of bread, all right? So uh, let's talk about ingredients. All right, guys, as I said before, making Cuban bread, uh, the ingredients for Cuban bread are no different than uh, many breads out there. Uh, we're gonna need uh, some all-purpose flour, some salt, sugar, some active yeast, and some water. I prefer to use the spring water because having a more neutral pH uh, is uh, more consistent in activating the yeast. Uh, we're also gonna need some lard. I make my own, but you're welcome to use butter or even Crisco, though I'm not a fan of Crisco. We are gonna need an optimizer to spray water over our bread. Uh, the finer the mist, the better, but anyone will do. And we are gonna need, one of the technical aspects of this uh, recipe is uh, what is called the stutter. The stutter is nothing more than flour, water, and yeast mixture that has been allowed to age for a minimum of 10 to 12 hours. In a small mixing bowl, Mix a teaspoon of active dry yeast and equal parts water and flour. I regret having used only a quarter cup, a half would have been much better. Mix it well, making sure that there are no lumps left. Cover it with plastic wrap and let it sit in the fridge overnight. Note that I have tried to rush this process and have always ended with mixed results. So, what that means is that if you want Cuban bread today, you better have done this mixture the night before. The next morning, I started by mixing a pack of dry yeast, two teaspoons of sugar, and three quarter cups of warm water into a large mixing bowl. Many people go straight from here into adding the flour, but I'm old school and I have yeast failed way too many times to be so confident. So after waiting about 10 minutes and making sure that my yeast was alive and kicking, I proceeded with adding two tablespoons of lard, two teaspoons of sea salt, one cup of flour, and although I didn't do it into much later, you should add the starter at this point. Making Cuban bread or any type of bread for that matter is not a science, but rather a fill and go react as you go procedure. So after adding about a cup of flour, I will continue to add until the dough reaches a state where it detaches from the wall as you mix it with a wooden spoon. At which point we're gonna flip it into a flour countertop or large cutting board. With the dough on top of the counter, we're gonna start kneading and adding small amounts of flour until the dough is barely tacky. We want a little bit of tackiness, but no flour transfers to our counter or hands. Once you have accomplished that, place your dough in a medium-sized mixing bowl, oil it so that the skin does not dry, and let it prove for about two hours, or until it doubles in size. After two hours, this is what it should look like. Go ahead and flour your countertop one more time, Transfer the dough and flatten it to get rid of any large air pockets. I was going to make two loaves, but changed my mind and decided to make one Cuban bread loaf and several Cuban frita buns. Mold your dough first by flattening it and then by folding it into itself. Once you have a rough shape, transfer them into a bake sheet that has been lined with parchment paper and lightly dusted with cornmeal. We then need to lightly dust the Cuban bread loaf and the buns with flour. Cover them with a dry towel and let it prove for another one to two hours or until the desired size has been achieved. In the past, I have allowed Cuban bread to proof in a cool oven overnight with no issues. Note that if you do this, you may end up with large air pockets or cavities inside. 
After you're satisfied with the size of your bread, this is what mine looks like after an hour. Get the sharpest knife you have and make a quarter inch deep cut across the top of the loaf. The authentic way is to do it with a palm leaflet, but mines are a little bit burned from the winter weather. Proceed to lightly spray your bread with cold water and then place your baking sheet in the center of a preheated 400 degree oven for 11 minutes on one side, at which time you're going to rotate the baking sheet and bake for another 11 minutes on the other side. Many old timers recommend putting a small container with water on the bottom rack. I have done this and used a softer bread, but I completely forgot this time around. After your baking time has expired, transfer your Cuban bread loaf and Frida buns to a cooling rack and enjoy it. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.